Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We want to hear from you today, so send us an email with your question or your comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today we have a great show. We have Candace Terrell and Susan Stawas, and they are with the Sarah Club. They are with the Archdiocese of Houston, Galveston. You could go to their website, sarahinternational.org. Now, I'm sure everybody has heard of the Sarah Club, but you know what? Not everybody has. And I was like, yeah. you'd be surprised how many churches or dioceses don't know about the Sarans. I was like, er I, yeah. I assumed everybody knew. It's Saint Unipero Serra. Mm -hmm. We actually visited one of his missions in California, oh, in San Juan Capistrano, when I was a lapsed Catholic and serving as an Episcopal priest, and kind of getting inklings, maybe I should come back and stuck my hand in the baptismal font in San Juan Capistrano, and said and prayed to Saint Unipero Serra and said, you know, should I come back and whatever? Well, I'm back. <laughs> Not a priest, but it's I'm all back. history now. You could take me back there now that we're Catholic. That'd be That'd great. Be fun. Figured you get a trip out of it, but yeah, at least. But the Serrans are just committed to vocations, to praying for our priests, praying for more priests, praying for more sisters, praying for deacons, praying for those that would go into the consecrated life, praying that all of us as lay people would be holy, to be holy as the Lord our God is holy. I'm thinking about um, the divine mercy that, that we've mm, just come through recently, yes. how beautiful, how powerful, and Jesus appearing in that room where the apostles and and those gathered were locked away for fear. And he shows his hands and he shows his side. And what does it say? They were glad to see the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even though they may have not stuck with him so closely, but he was giving forgiveness. And then he went to the apostles and he breathed his breath upon them. You know, after showing them his hands and his side, he breathes a special breath. We all have the breath of the Holy Spirit, but these apostles were priests. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, the sins you forgive are forgiven and the sins you retain are retained. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you in divine mercy. I'm sending you in forgiveness. Where will we be without the priests consecrating uh, the bread and the wine? It becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Where will we be without them voicing mm -hmm. to us, sharing our sins, mortal sins, and hearing your sins are forgiven. Mm. Sin no more. You're absolved and, and pray for me. So vocations are just critical to our faith. Well, and we, you're coming through Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, I just love to, the beautiful images that, we, and EWTN did a great job with all the coverage from all over the world that we, we watched. It was so beautiful. So thank you, EWTN, for really bringing to the whole world Divine Mercy well, Sunday. Today's show is all about vocations. Candace and Susan are going to be sharing with us from uh, Serens International, the Sarah Club. And so let's pray for our priests. And let's believe even in the show today, God's going to raise up priests and sisters, a people after his own heart. Don't go away. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you during our show. So if you have an email, just send it to jimandjoy at EWTN.com, and hopefully we'll use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Catherine Hadro. Now, Catherine is newly married. She is doing unbelievable work with EWTM Pro-Life Weekly. So Catherine, what do you have for us today? Hello, Jim and Joy. We have a packed show this week on EWTM Pro-Life Weekly. Our top topic, abortion reversal. A new medical study finds a 68% success rate for abortion pill reversal. We explain how it works and speak to a woman who successfully reversed the effects of the abortion pill she took and gave birth to her son, who is so cute, by the way. 
We also sit down and speak with a guest many EWTN viewers may be familiar with, Leah Darrow. Leah is a former top model who had a radical reversion experience. We speak to her about the importance of respecting the body and why that will build up the culture of life. And as we do on every show, we have our call to action, a way for you, yes you, to be directly involved in the pro-life movement this week. To find out what our call to action is and to take action now, go to ProLifeWeekly.com. Again, that is ProLifeWeekly.com. Now, back to you at home. Thank you so much, Catherine. Well, right now I bring to you two lovely ladies, yeah. Candace Terrell and Susan Stallways. These lovely ladies are doing an unbelievable work with the Sarah Club. They're with the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. You could go to their website, sarahinternational.org. Well, ladies, we want to welcome the both of you to At Home with Jim and Joy. You had an adventure to get here. We're glad you're here, and it's all good now because we're going. Well, Candace, we want you to tell our family at home a little bit how you got involved in the Sarah Club, how you heard about it, and the impact that it's made on your life. I got involved. I was really busy because I was leading the Jeff Cavins Bible study for seven years. And then my husband and I ran into a couple and they said, why don't you join the Sarah Club? We have great program meetings with beautiful speakers and you would just love it. Just come. You don't have to do anything. So we came and we just were hooked. I mean, it's vocations to the priesthood and consecrated uh, religious life that we promote. And without priest you know you don't have Eucharist mm -hmm. so that's one of the right. things why we joined and we just love it and we have um, Sarah um, spark.org with 25 programs on it that um, foster vocations to the priesthood we have a called by name program that is awesome that has helped uh, priests become priest we have some discerning now we I just before this show received an email from Father Ray Cook from Rice University that with this program, they have three that are actively discerning right now, Beautiful. and one sister from St. Anne's Parish in Tomball. And also, we had um, 72 names at our parish that were turned in that people thought would make a good priest, sister, or deacon. Mm -hmm. And there were 71 names that St. Anne's and Tomball turned in. So, I mean, it's incredible. We mm -hmm. have the altar server recognition awards that we give out. We go and host uh, breakfasts for uh, the masses that are to, for young adults to be recognized that are altar servers. And that's very important because I know our bishop, one of our bishops, Bishop Schultz, said he'll never forget the altar server appreciation award that he mm -hmm. received. It made a big p impact on his life. Mm -hmm. And we also hear a lot of priests say, if it wasn't for Sarah, we wouldn't be a priest today. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Great. And we have fun, too. I bet. We mm -hmm. have fun. Uh, we have an Advent dinner that mm -hmm. we have every year, and I think I send pictures in on that. Of um, We have uh, several priests that come. We had like five seminarians there this year that came, and we're going to make it larger next year. And Do you have priests in your family? Were priests familiar to you as a child growing up? We had priests that always came and visited at our home for dinner. So my parents were very, my dad was a fourth degree Knights of Columbus member. My mother, Irene Hundle, was Diocesan Council of Catholic Women, Pres Women President. She traveled around the country speaking and um, promoting um, things for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And so we had priests. Uh, like I said, come to our home and all. And my brother became a seminarian for two years, and then he left and married yep. his high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were, a, my parents were a very devout Catholics. We would kneel around the bed and pray the rosary when people were sick, and we would always kneel uh, down saying our night prayers together. There were six, I had two sisters and three brothers. Mm -hmm. And so, big Catholic family, Beautiful. but... We're very blessed. And you have a beautiful lots of family. nieces and nephews. We do, 32. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, I have a wonderful husband that's in the audience, Ed, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been married for 29 years. So, Great. yeah, Gosh. he's a convert also. Well, there beautiful. you go. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Yes. Susan, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the Sarah Club. Thank you. Um, well, we go to St. Anne Catholic Church up in Tomball, which is Houston's gigantic, the whole Archdiocese of Houston. I heard... Um, Candace speaking in our church. She was doing sort of like a membership drive. And our whole life is, as our family, we've moved around the world with my husband's job. Uh, we've been at different Catholic churches all around the world in 
uh, Aberdeen, Scotland, where we lived, and in Perth, Australia. And it's wonderful that Catholicism is the same mm -hmm. everywhere you go. But I thought, well, I need to get involved a little bit more. My son was um, discerning for the priesthood, but it really had nothing to do with him being in seminary. It was about me, that I felt like I needed to be on the ground doing more. She said a wonderful statistic that 50% of parents of seminarians don't actually want their sons to be priests. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, well, I wanted my son to be a priest, but for all those other 50%, I wanted to do something for them. So it seemed like the Serian clubs were so organized, they had a programs already in place, yeah. and that I could just sort of tap in and become part of the solution. Now that's such a difficult statistic, and more than a statistic, just you know, whatever's going on with people, I would think that that would apply to, you know, families, maybe even mothers in particular, aren't even sharing about vocations. But you're saying once a young man discerns a vocation, he wants to test that out, he's going off to seminary, you're saying 50% of those families are not supportive. I mean, I get kind of some families don't even want to talk about it, but you're talking about people that are already in seminary, men already in seminary, and the families are not supportive. Well, it really is a cost, isn't there, to discipleship mm. and to fulfilling that it call? It is. And I think a lot of families, um, I've had people approach me and say, well, Susan, you must be very sad that your son is not going to give you any grandchildren. And um, my son struggled with uh, cancer when he was 20. Um, I'm really glad he's on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he decided um, he graduated from A&M, in petroleum engineering, and he came home with a, a job offer and said, uh, well, Dad, I think uh, God wants me to do something else. And of course, my husband was a little uh, surprised by that. And Is he in that field? Yes, he no, is. I figured mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yes, okay. he is. Well, that's uh, the only field you can go into. Well, <laughs> for 38 years, he's been in that field, so okay. he was kind of focused. Uh, <laughs> but, but when it came down to it, mm. um, Ryan said, uh, I think God wants me to be a priest. So we, we took a step back but then we said okay you know this is this is what it's going to be for our family I was glad he wanted to work full-time for glad God mm -hmm. I was glad he was wanting to do something fulfilling yeah. mm -hmm. and that's basically what we want for our children right for them to be happy mm -hmm. yes and for some reason um, a lot of people a lot of parents out there feel like their goal is to have their children happy but then they want grandkids yeah mm -hmm. and I said wait a minute he's on the planet he wants to work full-time for God God will give me the joy in my heart mm -hmm. that I need um, when I'm missing him, when he's busy with his parish life. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I've found the Sarens who are, you know, very active in vocations. And so I will actually be supporting his priesthood yeah. by getting involved yeah with a lot of other parishes mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. I have to say this lady is amazing. She's my VP of yeah. programs and she planned this whole pilgrimage. We just left St. Joseph's Abbey, which was fantastic. There's 142 seminarians there. Mm -hmm. The majority are from Texas. There's 12 from Fort Worth, 11 from Houston. Don't so mess with Texas. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with Texas is right. Yeah. So, oh, it was amazing. And then, of course, we had some trouble coming here mm -hmm. but with the bus problems and all. You know, when you were sharing, you know, just about the seminarians being in seminary and not having support from them, I mean, that just breaks your heart mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that would be like your son being in the military and you're mad that he's in the military. Right. I mean, that's hard enough to do that service and to say, my life mm -hmm. is not my own. I'm going to lay down my life. And you, you need all the support and all the encouragement because... It's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about them and God's call in their lives. And you know, I, I think of that verse, he who loves father or mother, sister or brother more mm -hmm. than me is not worthy of me, you know, mm -hmm. the Lord says. So that's a particular, not that we want to bring, you know, frustration and conflict, but there really is a call, especially for, for priests. They, they have to love the Lord above all else and be obedient and know at the same time that will work out well for our families as well. But the families have to say the same thing. Right. Exactly. They have to say, if I love father, mm -hmm. mother, sister, brother, you know, more than what the Lord wants, grandkids more than what the Lord, you know, I have to, what do you want, Lord, your, your voice? Because if we just go with that, whatever that is, it's going to work out well all the way around. Mm -hmm. When you think of the vocation of the priesthood and how many lives that they touch, um, you know, one of the ladies from our archdiocese, Rhonda, uh, Grinwall, she wrote a book called A Hundred Fold. She's trying to support vocations throughout the United States. She's got a great website, um, a great book that she wrote that she, for people who are touched when God touches them, because he touches all of us, mm -hmm. right? Right. 
when he touches them, what do I do about it then? Well, you go to the website or you go to the Sarah Club website. There's different programs available that you can pull into your own parish because ultimately, like Candace was saying, without the priest, there's no Eucharist. And without the Eucharist, yeah. there's no grace. Mm -hmm. But you, you're both saying that Sarah offers a number of different programs. Things are already laid out mm -hmm. so she that if I'm interested you know, I, I would always work with my priest, with the diocese, in this area of vocations. What can we do as an individual or as a family, or what can we implement? You've got a lot of stuff already to go. Yes, Judy Cousins, her, her, her son's a bishop, Bishop Andrew Cousins. She's responsible for the sarahspark.org web uh, uh, programs mm -hmm. that has 25 um, programs on it right now. And you know, like the called by name program, if someone didn't approach them or give them a little, um, guidance that, well, you would make a good priest or sister, they may never come to mm -hmm. do that. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just fantastic, the so programs that you I speak Even altar server appreciation, right. mm -hmm. that's big for them. That mm -hmm. Call by public. name Called by means name. that you, you might go to someone and say, have you considered? Mm -hmm. you, we, call we, to we have cards that we pass out in the pews. For two weekends, we have a seminarian deacon or uh, yeah. priests speak at, at the pulpit, you know, for their homilies okay. for two weekends in a row. And we pass out cards in the pews that has someone that you think would make a good priest, sister, or deacon, and they yeah. write that, uh, their name on there and yeah. the information of them. Yeah. And then we, uh, Father, uh, the pastor will send them a letter to, to uh, attend a dis, um, discernment breakfast mm -hmm. is what we mm -hmm. just had, and that's what I love that. Like. It's kind of the opposite it's of turning in criminals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turn, in criminals turn in holy people. Uh, uh, it's got, uh, was your name turned in? My name yeah. was turned in. They yeah. think I'm... It's yeah. a beautiful yeah. program. That's great. I yes. think it's fantastic. Well, another great it. thing is uh, all the young people asking them, have you ever thought about being an altar server? Mm -hmm. You know, all the little kids, right? Mm -hmm. The seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds. Have you thought about being an altar server? Gosh, we really need some help on the altar. You'd be great at it. It's a lot of fun. And then they go, oh, okay. And then you try to follow through with setting them up with actually getting on the altar. And those, how many priests do you hear about that they were altar servers yes. and that was part of being right up there on the altar, mm -hmm. right next to the consecration that helped to give them a new sense of God's right. presence. 80%. Right. 80% of priests were altar or servers. Or even people, you know, other men who were altar servers who then may have left the church yes. and all mm -hmm. that Latin's inside of them and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. then when they have a reversion, I mean, all that's awakened inside mm -hmm. of them because God doesn't waste any time. All those things matter that we do, especially when we're around holy things. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, we just got a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So I want you to share with people, what do we need to be doing as individuals or as a family? What can we do to help support our priests and support vocations? I would like to say that prayer, prayer. yes. One of the big things that Saren's about is we have a lot of different programs that people can be actively supporting, but there's also part of our ministry is a great call to individual faith formation, and we also do it collectively at prayer. So we're really very much into trying to get the vocation prayer into every parish mm -hmm. that they say maybe after Mass, mm -hmm. or uh, you know the Divine Mercy, right. trying to uh, bring uh, forms of prayer uh, that collectively we're offering all those for, um, for the vocations. Candace, close us out with a word. Well, she's so right in that because we weren't doing that for, I mean, we just let the ball drop, I mm -hmm. think, for years. And now the priests are increasing 25%, I heard Father T.J. Jolche just say. So the prayers are working, the mm -hmm. serens are working, the vocation committees that Rhonda Grinwall is, is promoting around the country, it's all working. Mm -hmm. So praise God for all of this. Mm -hmm. And I would like to encourage families to pray together at night. Pray together at meals, go to mass together, pray the rosary together, do all those Catholic things that we grew up with that we're not doing anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because I think that's gonna be, help us to have stronger families which make us have stronger vocations. Yeah. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. You can find the information at sarahinternational.org. Father Len is gonna be joining us. We're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, welcome back. Well, in a minute, we're going to get Father Leonard's perspective 
on today's show. But first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Now, Joan, I understand that you have had a long history with the Sarah Club. Well, welcome to everyone. Welcome to my home in Rome on this beautiful, ever beautiful Easter season. And you know, I have to tell you, I'm very excited, happy to be part of a program that focuses on the Sarah Club. I've known the Sarah Club since I was very young because my dad was very involved in Sarah in Illinois. And I was able to attend quite a number of functions, father-daughter luncheons, father-daughter dinners, and very often the international conventions when they were held in the U.S. and Canada. And I have to say our parish, St. Edmund's in Oak Park, we had wonderful priests. And these were the days when a church had three or four pastors, priests. It was just amazing. And of course, the priesthood was such a revered vocation. And frankly, ever since those days, I have been praying for vocations to the priesthood. Now, Sarah, of course, has really close ties with the Vatican. In the early years, it was with the Congregation for Catholic Education because that congregation oversaw seminaries. But in January 2013, Benedict XVI transferred that responsibility to the Congregation for um, Clergy. Probably makes a little bit more sense. Now, in June of 2017, Sarah held its 75th International Convention here in Rome. And they were welcomed by the Pope on June 23rd. And he focused his talk to them on friendship. Here's what he said. He said, being friends is central to the experience of faith. To be friends with priests, sustaining their vocation and accompanying them in their mystery, with this gift, you, you Sarans, enrich the church. This is, above all else, what a Saren is, a special friend whom the Lord has brought into the lives of seminarians and priests. Now, we said the Sarah Club helps foster this beautiful vocation of being lay people who are friends to priests. And he says, friends who know how to accompany and sustain them in faith, in fidelity to prayer, and apostolic commitment. So a wonderful, wonderful organization, the Sarah Club, and I'll close with their invocation. Mary, Mother of Vocations, pray for us. Joan, thanks so much for your personal history with the Sarans and then the Holy Father's appreciation for their work in the Vatican's really seeing them as an apostolic arm mm -hmm. all over the world for vocations. Father, it's wonderful to be with you. Oh, it's great to be here too. Good to see you all. Wonderful Happy show. Easter. Yeah, Happy Easter, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, wonderful show, and the uh, Sarah Club, they're doing a very powerful work, very necessary in this time. Um, you know, we, as a, as a priest, I'm very grateful for what they do, and thank you all your Sarans out there, you know, that yeah. it's, it's very much needed. And I remember, you know, as a seminarian, they were there always offering encouraging words, they would sponsor dinners and things like that, and send us uh, gift cards or greeting cards on our birthdays and everything else, and then their prayers, the prayers were just so powerful. And yeah. and then now, you know, to hear, it's a very joyous to hear that they're recognizing yeah. vocations, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. sending the name to the priest and everything, yeah. that's, that's just that's wonderful, great. yeah. I, th they're sharing about, you know, turning mm -hmm. in holy right. people, so to speak, yeah. turning in their names. <laughs> and uh, I also think about, you know, on, on the opposite side of that, you know, we think about things going on in a society yeah. that aren't good. If you mm -hmm. see something, say something that doesn't right. look right. You see something, say, and it's like if you see something mm -hmm. in that man, you see something in that woman, yeah. mm -hmm. say something. Say, it. say something yeah. to yeah. them. Say, how do you think they're going to know mm -hmm. or consider yeah. when you're not saying anything? Mm -hmm. We're, we quickly say things sometimes in criticism, mm -hmm. but if you see something in, in your priest, oh, yeah. in somebody, say something. Yeah, that's, that's right, you know, because it's the people who, you know, they want to be fed and they see somebody who can feed them, somebody who would be a good priest, who maybe is a good speaker, just a very prayerful person. And, uh, you know, so they, yeah, the, yeah they knew that the, the people, the, um, those who are uh, out there, uh, you know, who would look like they have a vocation, they need to know, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes once they hear this, then they may, you know, take a step forward and discern. And did people come up to you as you were a little boy growing up in the church? <laughs> <laughs> well, more like when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. they started to say stuff, and sometimes I listened, and sometimes I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but look where you are now. <laughs> look where I am now. <laughs> God wins, doesn't he? He always wins. That's Typical right. teenager, now yeah. a holy priest. Father, mm -hmm. uh, conclude this time with a prayer and a blessing. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the great work that the Sarah Club is doing. 
We ask you to bless it and to multiply it, Lord, and also to touch many hearts of those young men and women out there who are called to be priests and sisters. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, We Father. hope that you've enjoyed Welcome. this show today, and we're going to have plenty more to come on Friday as we share with some seminarians from the Diocese of Galveston, Houston. So God bless you. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now. Thank you.